Welcome to Pips on Location. We're the new partners in public safety. I'm Inspector Frank Mall of the Wilmington Fire Department. This show will be showing you fire footing up front through the eyes of our producer, Sheila Freeman. She'll be assisted by two firefighters, Martina Sudler and Jodalia Martinez. Firefighters Sudler and Martinez will be going inside a burning building with Sheila with a fire hose and extinguishing a fire. Afterwards, we'll be talking to Battalion Chief Elizabeth Tickner. She's the first Battalion Chief. Then we'll be talking to Inspector Beverly Wiltshire. She's one of the very first female firefighters on the Wilmington Fire Department. Mm -hmm. Oh, now they fit. Well, that's what I said. You'd, you'd be surprised when you, what socks you have on. Yeah. They'll fit a lot better because she brought another pair of socks just in case. K1. Covering the radio. K1 makes response. 2706 West 6th Street, 2706 West 6th. Apartment 2, a person falling 17 Alpha 2. You want to start over? Yeah. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Just the problems we go through, especially with. Hopefully we'll do two fires. One we gotta set in there and let it burn out just to get him get some good fire. Do one fire her putting it out, that'll be it. Okay, so when we go in, we're going to be down low. 
once you get beyond the step. Yeah. Okay. When you get up to the step, we're going to put our masks on. We're going to go in. And we usually go in crawling on our knees like this. Stay down low. We don't ever go in walking. Okay. okay. Why is that? Well, fire is above you usually. It's really hot. Down low is where it's cooler. There's less smoke, less heat. So you want to stay down low as possible. Okay. You're going to have this here. I'm going to be right behind you. your base. Okay. You're going to open it really slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, when there's pressure on it, it's a little harder to open, but um, you're going to not do that. Right. It can call the water hammer. We'll call the water hammer. Call the truck to kind of get jacked up. Yeah. So we're going to open it really slowly. Okay. This is how you control what stream comes out of the nozzle. It can be straight stream, which is more so penetration, or you can do it um, fog. Yeah, just like a home tool. Right, it's like a home tool. Yeah. So the fog is usually if you want to ventilate maybe out of a window, or sometimes people like to keep it right in the middle. Now we can get penetration and a very wide um, pattern. So some of the it has to be on this side. You can whatever side is more comfortable. Okay. Do you want to charge it real quick to give her a little bit of um? Yeah. Uh, possible. Yep. Good. That's perfect right there, Marty, don't you think? That's perfect. That's perfect, perfect. <laughs> See, it's not the hard, is it there, <laughs> Sheila? This is great.
going to take your clip. And when you're ready to breathe, you just cook it and take a deep breath. Okay. All right. Oh, 
Somebody's down. Okay. Okay. So what we have to do is to make sure we completely turn it off so it doesn't keep going off and bleed out the lines after we shut it off. Right. We bleed the lines out. Uh huh. And then all we're doing is we just reset it. And then what we'll do after a fire is we'll either go to squad one or squad three and we'll have these bottles filled back up to 45. Okay. So they'll do that. They'll refill these up for us so then we're ready for the next time around. Did I use that much? Yes. You, you, we started at 45. Depending upon your breathing, how, how fast you deplete the air. So you're probably almost at 30. I was using a lot. You're at 38. <laughs> So that's why you have to learn to somewhat control your breathing right. as you're in there. So normally it would be what? Uh, it all depends. Everybody's breathing is different. Okay. So okay. there's a lot of us that can, some of us that can stay a lot longer and use the same amount. There's some that are just heavy breathers and they just consume. Oh, I see. So yeah. as m much as you can calm yourself down and breathe slower, the more you have in there. And take maybe like deeper breaths. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to hold your breathing like down. Yeah. This is this is physically demanding. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good job. Good job. Thank yeah. you. As as you I, I just I have to admit there was a little bit of panic and I saw that fire. When it comes rolling over. It yeah. Feeling. And and I knew I I had something there to, to knock it out. So I was I felt like I'm gonna work this. Yeah. So it was thrill thrilling to see it go out, but still it just just being in the smoke itself yeah. was uh, I just felt more from the smoke and just trying to I didn't want it to overtake me forgetting I had the tank yeah. on yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the good part is this one was contained right imagine going in when in you have house. all the slam of everybody's house is different setups right quarters, some quarters yeah. everything catches on fire around you whatever it might be it, all, it just all depends on 
what you're going into. Every one is different. Right. Every house, every area is different. This could have been on the second floor. It could have been anywhere. It could have been in the basement. It could have been multiple rooms and, you know, yes. sometimes right. it's not that easy. And you're walking through the smoke first in some yes. cases some before floor. you get to the yes. actual Sometimes we plane. start here and it's so dark you have no idea and that's why we had the tick cameras so we're able to see where the heat is coming from. We just follow that. So it's like blind leading the blind, but we have an advantage of having a tick camera to help guide us. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God they came out with that technology. Yes. Right, yes. right. That actually helps us a lot in there. And that's why, as you notice with the hose, how heavy it is, that's why we have to have multiple people on it to help us maneuver it. And, and a lot of times we don't charge it until we get in there right. mm -hmm. and we know where we're at. Because here we knew it was here, so we're going to charge it before we come in. But if it's on the second floor or somewhere mm -hmm. in the area, we usually wait until we're closer to it, and then we'll say charge the line, and then it'll all come up, and that makes it just so much easier to maneuver. Because yeah. once this Imagine is charged, that up. this is dead. No. Yeah. No, yeah. And, and it's it's already the water's already coming through, right. so it's ready for you. You just have to open it and yeah. shoot, yeah. Yeah, aim yeah. and shoot. But yeah. the the weight of it, that was. Yeah. Yeah, besides all of this, water pressure I know is a lot. This is, oh. And this, is, this was actually, we didn't have any friction loss. So mm -hmm. This is straight. So imagine it going upstairs, downstairs, and bending in between doorways or jams. Or if someone has dressers, whatever, that creates a lot of friction loss. And then we have to um, boost up the pressure in order to break out the friction loss in it. Because a lot of times these, they get bent if they're not in the, ho in the houses, in the corners and things, or right. even underneath the doors. Right, so. right. Well, if you notice, I did not go past that the, threshold. The, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is that right? Yeah. It was, because no, it was, in. you go all yeah. the way in. Yeah. I just had to stop. But when it wasn't going out, and, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have a lot of pressure. In order to get to it, we could have pushed pushing. in a little bit more. Once right. you see it darkening down, you keep pushing, push, push, push. Yeah, so yeah. That's how we. Yeah, I needed that one foot outside the door. <laughs> yeah, safety for you. Right, yeah. right. You did good. You did great <laughs> Thank that's you. Because the worst thing we can do is block your entry and your egress because we're not the only firefighters in there. Yeah, there's other You have the ladder truck us. guys in there. You also have the rescue squad and You have people in there searching. Right. So we can't block the means of egress, and that's why a lot of times they put ladders up. There's other ways for us to get in and out for mm -hmm. those people that are through there. So blocking the door is definitely a no -no. But you know your path, you know which way you're going Everybody and the other assignments. person. Yeah, yep. yeah. Everybody knows their assignments and there's a lot of communication on the radio. So a lot of times that's why everyone has to stay off of it and listen. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard, like, would you be able to hear a radio when you're trying to focus on your job? So it's just hard, but you got to be able to multitask and do all Just that like stuff. the bottle, right. when, your, when your bottle starts ringing, you yeah. got to be like, oh, oh, I got to move it. You know, yeah. then somebody might think you're in trouble and it sends out. Oh, it's an trouble. indication yeah. of yes. trouble. So they're, it's going to take from what they're doing. Right. The AG. Right. Yes. Okay. For someone to say firefighter down, they're gonna think because they keep hearing it go off. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's a safety feature. If you're not moving within uh, 30 seconds, it just automatically goes off. <laughs> so you have to constantly, every time we're standing around, everyone's jiggling it. Right. Just so it yeah. doesn't go off. Or if someone I see. isn't paying attention, someone will reach over and just, you know, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Go. Well, and just trying to move, maneuver it, and with all of this on. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Even with no. behind you, you know, taking some of that weight off of the hose, you still... Don't do that yet. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I felt good having you behind me, believe me. <laughs> I would have just bad. like, we're done, I'm ready to go. You just want to drop everything and go, but it's not that easy. Because even this is something small, but normally we have to go back in, clean it out, mm -hmm. break everything down. If they're dirty, we have to make sure there's no, um, the hose isn't dirty, make sure mm -hmm. it's ready for the next one. If there's any um, debris, anything. anything on it, we have to take it out of service and tag it and replace it when we get yeah. back. So, so it doesn't stop just after the fire. Yes. Right. We're still working even after yeah. when we get back. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I thought to myself, I see that fire and I'm the average person. I run from the fire. Yeah. You <laughs> run into the fire. Everyone's running out, we're running in. <laughs> yes. Real heroes, really. <laughs> I really appreciate what you do. Thank you. We have uh, Battalion Chief Elizabeth Tickner here today from the Wilmington Fire Department. Uh, Chief Tickner is one of the first women battalion chiefs on the fire department, and thank you for joining us today, Chief Tickner. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, why don't you tell the audience, what gave you the desire to become a firefighter here at the Wilmington Fire Department? Well, I started off as a volunteer 
when I was 17, 18 years old. And I really enjoyed the type of work that we did and the camaraderie with the other people in the department. And then when I found out that I could get paid for it, I says, I think this is my calling. That's not, not bad. Not a bad, bad thing, thing to do what you love. That's great. Now, what year did you come on? I came on 1987, quite some time ago. <laughs> yes, oh, that's great. So you're coming up, what, 28 years now? Yeah, yes. I'm working on my 27th year. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, now, what assignments have you had since you've been on the fire department? A variety of assignments. I started my career. I was uh, top of my class, so you got to pick where you get to go. Oh, really? So I got assigned at uh, Squirt 1. These are old terms okay, now. Right, yes. Snorkel 2. Okay. Ladder 1. Engine 6. Uh, Squirt 4. So you had some pretty good assignments. You had some busy, busy stations while you were here. Absolutely. On the you can't come into this job and pick a... Uh, station that doesn't run so much you got to jump in and be fulfilled with the workload right right so and then i got to the fire marshal's office how was that uh, that, that was probably one of my most challenging parts of my job because i took a college two-year class with uh, fire protection engineering at dell tech okay. and even though it gave me a good solid background you're still a lot to learn in the right. fire marshal's office. Right. So and that's, that's in the fire service in general. It's constantly learning because we have so many new techniques that come out. Absolutely. Yes. So I imagine throughout your whole 27 years, you've seen changes like you wouldn't believe then, would you, on the fire department? I think so. The good part with the uh, learning the fire code, you can see uh, cause and effect. Okay. And. It was great incorporating both of those teaching and experiencing because I feel I'm a better officer today. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Now, Chief, at the fire scene, what is your role? What, do you, what is your duties when you get to the fire scene? Um, when you get there, if you have a, a house on fire and you have smoke and you have fire coming from the structure when you pull up, what is your role there? Uh, let's put it in basic layman's terms. I'm a conductor of an orchestra, okay. and it's my job to uh, orchestrate the different parts of the band. Okay. So those different parts would be an engine company, a ladder company, and not too long ago, a rescue company. Mm -hmm. So I have to coordinate all those companies at a chaotic fire scene and try to minimize the damage to the property keep the civilians and our firefighters safe okay. and get the situation under control. Great. So you'd be like a manager on a baseball team then, basically, telling the players where to go and instruct That's right. them how to do it. And we still use hand signals still. Oh, I believe <laughs> it, yes. Um, now, could you tell me what would be one of the most fulfilling things to happen to you while you've been on the fire department? Has there been any major you know, things that you know, you can look at? Absolutely. This job is a very self-gratifying job. You yourself are your worst critic okay. and also the best critic. Yes. And it wasn't maybe two years on the job. I delivered on the receiving end, I know it's a teamwork, a baby boy breach and upside down. Oh, wow. On the ramp of Station 1. Oh, wow. That is my best memory of this job. And that's great. That, Absolutely. That's great. You brought a life into the world, and you know, there's nothing more gratifying than that. She didn't take my name, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let me ask you, if you had to tell a woman uh, about becoming an officer on the fire department, how, how would you go about doing that? I think it's the start of your first day. When I was on the bus going back and forth to Dover to fire school, I realized then that I didn't want to hump hose for the rest of my career. So I promised myself I'd make a lieutenant. And I focused, I took every opportunity that was presented, or I searched, and I jumped on that. And one is uh, going into the fire marshal's office. Okay. Got into the fire marshal's, which opened another door to go to the police academy. Oh, that's great. So, oh, so you went through the police academy also. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So if you don't 
look at those opportunities that everyone has. Catch them, grab onto them, and run with it. Right. It's all your responsibility of what you want to do with your career. Great. Be ahead of the curve after your 25 years of service. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for being here today, Chief Tickner. Anytime. Um, and like I said, we are so happy with the job you do here on the fire department and the way you take care of us firefighters. So. I love my career. I couldn't imagine me doing anything else. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'd like to welcome Inspector Beverly Wilcher here to the um, show. Uh, Inspector Wilcher was one of the very first women firefighters here on the Wilmington Fire Department. Thank you for being on the show today, Inspector Wilcher. You're welcome. Uh, what year did you come on the fire department? <laughs> uh, November 7th, 1983. Wow, so you're over 30 years you've got experience on the job there. Come, come now. There's <laughs> no need to count. You know. <laughs> Let's just say I've, I've been around a minute. Right, okay. Now, um, were there any other uh, women firefighters with you when you came on the job? Yes. When I was hired uh, in 1983, I came on with Sharon Smith. Okay. And I still see her from time to time. Yes, everybody loves yes, Sharon. Yes, Miss Smith and Tracy she was dyke when she came on and then later on she got married and the bonus so right, yeah. um, but i haven't seen tracy since she left yeah i haven't either yes yeah. so i was on when tracy was on also maybe yes. she's in hiding that's possible <laughs> <laughs> now um throughout your career uh, i'm sure you've had numerous assignments here on the mm -hmm. fire department mm -hmm. uh could you tell us some of the assignments that you've had while you've been here like some of the companies that you've been in one two three Four, five. I've been everywhere but six. Wow. Okay. So you've hit the whole the whole circuit, basically. I've been on a world tour. Yeah. Now, have you mostly been on the engine companies, or have you ever been in a ladder company or the rescue? Or I've throughout my career, I've always been on the engine. Okay. Do you, you like the engine work? I know that's where you're going in with the hose and and fighting the fire. So how can you not? Is right? there any other company? Right there. You go. Oh, Is boy. there any other assignment? Oh, there you go. That's uh, <laughs> you ever tried to fight a fire with a ladder? Uh, there you go. Oh, boy. You're going to start some of the liar guys down. I can so. take it. <laughs> now, um, being on the fire department and having these assignments, what has been your favorite assignment since you've, you've been on the job? I know you're now in public education with myself, you and I, and, um, but what, what has been your favorite assignment since you've been on the job? I tell you, Frank, uh, that's a very good question because um, I can honestly say um, I rode um, in suppression for 23 years, but um, I didn't develop passion for the job until I came to fire prevention. And I have developed such a burning passion for fire prevention, um, you know, when you leave suppression, some, sometimes that's it. That's that's it. But with suppression, it's never you're you're never off the clock because you're constantly thinking about ways that you could get to an audience that will inspire them to check their smoke alarms and do all the things that we go out and we teach them to do, whether it's children or seniors uh, throughout the nation, people are still burning and getting hurt and killed in fires. Right. So at the end of my day, I'm constantly thinking, what else can, can I do? Can I come up with a, with a new program or a new something that can um, inspire right. our constituents to be safer? And that is the main goal of the fire department is to prevent fires. That is, and that yeah, is yeah. Your number one job is. Yes. Now, Beverly, if you could, in closing, if you had any um, advice for any women that would like to try to get into the fire service, what, what would that be? That's another good question, Frank. Um, what I would honestly say to them is, if you, you have to hit the door with courage. Courage is something that can't be taught, like taking a hydrant or climbing a ladder. Those things can be taught once you're hired, but 
you, you have to develop or you have to have the courage to do what we do because as someone said to me 31 years ago, uh, you have to want to do this job because you're running in when everyone else is running out. All right. So you have, a little, have to have a little bit of heart too besides just that courage, huh? Yes. That's, that's what courage yes. is, yeah. heart. All right. yes. Very yeah. good. That's a great point. <laughs> great. Right. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for being here on the show today, Beverly. And thank um, you for having and me. Like I said, it's great working with you. I enjoy it. So, but and I you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the show. But before we leave, we want to remind your audience: make sure you check your smoke alarms and seal alarms each month. The life you save may be your own. We'll see you next time on Pips on Location. <laughs>